are here to talk about what I want to do in 2024. My goals, my ambitions, my dreams. We'll see at the end of the year if I have fulfilled those dreams or if they lie crushed in the dirt. I thought it might be kind of fun for me to figure out if I actually did what I wanted to in 2023. So let's let's investigate that before we dive into 2024 quickly. Number one is uh, I think that I would like to try to find some intentional rereading projects. Rereading more. Nope. <laughs> this one, big old fail. Uh, I but you'll see in a minute. I have a plan to rectify this. Another kind of like overall goal I have is that I started tracking my series reading a lot more intentionally. My goal is by the end of next year, because I'm sure I know for a fact that I'm going to start new series next year. Um, I would like by the end of 2023 to only have 30 series that I'm behind on or in progress on, because I think that's kind of going to become a longer term goal for me over the next like probably three years, four years. I, my ultimate goal is to at any given time only have like five to 10 that I'm behind on or in progress with. Yeah, okay, this one I did. Series getting them, uh, the number of series I'm behind on. I wanted to get down to 30 and I believe I'm actually at the end of 2023 down to 15. So I like crushed that particular goal. And that actually segues, like I was saying, nicely into the third kind of like intention or goal I have in mind on the fact that like, I think part of what is happening with my physical TBR is I just have like a cohort of them that I've had for a really long time at this point. Some of that is because at the very beginning of when I joined booktube, I went hog wild on book outlet and I did get things that I'm still interested in. Like I have done enough unhauling at this point. If I truly had no interest in them, they would be gone by now. So it's not that I have no interest in them. It's just that they're not, like I was saying, they're not fresh anymore. And I think what I would like to do in 2023 is focus on reading those books or unhauling them. Like I've seen some people do kind of the concept of like this book will explode in however long, <laughs> um, that if I've not read it by then it has to go. This isn't quite to that level, but I have identified like I was doing a big TBR cleanup, like I sorted by books I've had the longest. So I've identified 10 of those that I would like to read this year. And I'm actually not even going to tell you guys what they are, because I think that that will create too much of like, this is a set TBR. And that's not really what that is meant to do. It's more just an awareness factor for myself. So like I've noted them in the spreadsheet. And like, I'm going to try to prioritize getting to those along with I did a wrap my TBR video. And you guys had a bunch of cool suggestions. I have some ideas about ways to use the 30 books that I wrapped up this year. And I'm going to make that a priority. Ooh, okay, this one, I would say, I pr I think I mostly meant this ish. I well, yeah, no, I, I think I made it a soft goal and I accomplished it a soft amount. <laughs> so did I completely get through that entire list of things I identified? No, but I also didn't set that as the hard goal. And you will see in 2024, I have some like new goals around that. I have a big backlog of audio that I've not gotten to. I've been working from home for almost three years. And so I just don't, I used to listen to so much more audio on my commute and then like at work while I was focusing on things and I just don't do that as much now. So I think I might need to make a project to like focus on that. So this one, it's kind of hard to say because I purposely set up two vlogs where the whole point was for me to listen to audiobooks while I was doing it, which was my two sewing vlogs I did. But I have discovered that for a good portion of the sewing process, listening to audiobooks is not something I can really do because I'm actually having to like think about the math and stuff. So I would say I definitely attempted to fulfill this goal but I did not, my my plan to fulfill it did not work. So I guess kind of. Another like refocusing thing is I don't think I made a ton of progress this year reading Roberts. My feeling is that I didn't make as much progress on reading Roberts this year as I wanted to, which is where I'm trying to read everything Nora Roberts has ever written or DNF it. <laughs> read it or DNF it is the plan. So I didn't make as much progress on that in 2022. So I would like to do that in 2023. Oh, this one I definitely did. I, I went on, 
I remember at the beginning of 2023, I went on to say that I wanted to try to read two a month. And I believe at the in 2023, I read 25, which would be more than two a month. So this one I did. One arc that I have in physical form as a representative placeholder. Of course, I'm going to read the advanced reader copies that I request and or receive. So I always say that I want to read fewer of these every year and I never seem to do it. Theoretically, I want to read fewer arcs this year and focus on the ones that I'm genuinely really excited about, want to make a plan and time for, but I always get excited. Like I have shiny objects syndrome with arcs. So there's a very good chance that that will continue. Insert a placeholder for like 40-ish books. That's my theoretical target, like 40-ish books that I'm gonna read in advance, also on the TBR. Oh, this I failed at. Every year I say I'm gonna read fewer arcs and then I go at the end of the year, I think you guys have already seen my stats and I've read like nearly the identical number. So this, this is a good transition into what it, our goals are for 2024. Okay, so overall 2023, I think I did pretty good. And the ones that I did not do as good on, I have plans for this year that are more concrete and I think will be helpful. So let's start with, oh God, I cannot read all the way over there. Okay. You know what? Where's my phone? I'm going to be looking at my phone because I cannot read this teeny tiny text without my glasses. Okay. Let's start with the ones that are addressing the big ones that I think I did not meaningfully handle in 2023 because they are still things I want to do. We're going to come up with more concrete ways of achieving that in 2024. Okay. I should say in general, the theme for 2024 is freshen it up. I don't know. I don't know what my branding for this is. But, uh, make it fresh. Moving on. I don't know. I want, my goal for 2024 is that I would like, by the end of the year, I would like my TBR to be very fresh. I would like to be very excited for every single book that I own, which I think I'm close to. And I would like things to have been recently selected by me that I want to read them. So I'm not going on a no buy, but I'm going to have a different posture towards new books coming in, which we'll talk about. And I really, this is like a backlist year. This is a year for me to d dig in and embrace things that have already come out, etc. So in that spirit, I'm giving myself an advanced reader copy budget for NetGalley. So if you are a fellow NetGalley user, you may also have this problem where you'll see something and you'll think, oh, that sounds good. Was it on my radar prior? No. Was it, is it a priority? No. But then I request it or I am auto approved and I just download it. And now I've made a commitment and now I've got to read it. And it's for this reason that I can never get my arc number down. So this year, I don't have as many anticipated things for 2024. And that goes with 2023. I feel like the front list, there are definitely great things that are still coming out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not as excited about front lists last year or this year as I have been in some previous years. So I'm going to try to, when I didn't heed that last year, I ended up reading a lot of fine books, a lot of like mid books that were perfectly okay, but not exciting. And I want to read exciting books. So because this is another year where at least coming into it, I don't have as many things that I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this to come out. Mo I'm gonna limit the number of arcs that I just request on NetGalley down to 25. Normally I read like 50-ish in the year. So I don't know that I'll adhere completely to that 25 number, but I think by giving myself a budget, it will definitely decrease, like it will make me much less prone to shiny object syndrome and much more focused on what I'm requesting. So like, yes, am I going to get the new side changeling book? Of course I am. Like there's some that are like, duh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them. And I do currently have, I think 11 books right now on NetGalley. So I'm not including those. That was 2023, Mara made those choices. So for 2024 though, I'm only gonna request 25 more. And this hopefully will mean that I have a significant jump down in the number of arcs that I'm reading. So that's the intention. That's how I'm gonna address that arc one. Okay, and then rereading. Well, I don't know if I wanna tell you about these yet. I have, let's just say that I have identified several vlogging projects that are rereading projects. 
So that means I will purposefully be setting myself up to do rereading, which I think will be fantastic because that means I'll be rereading things that I already know I like. I think it also will give me more permission to enjoy the books that I already know I enjoy. <laughs> I used to read, so I was looking kind of year over year at my stats. Prior to booktube, I read usually I think about 150-ish new books a year and like I reread 100 books. I reread far more before I joined booktube and there's this, you know, especially because you're doing reading wrap ups, like you kind of want to be you want to be a part of the conversation. That's the whole thing. You want to be talking about the books that other people are talking about. And I think it hasn't fostered a situation where I reread nearly as much as I used to. I used to reread constantly. So I want to get back to that. And I think by doing vlogging projects, I'll still it'll give me the motivation to just go ahead and do it and give myself kind of the permission permission to do it. So um, I've got a couple projects there. I think I'm going to reread the Rebecca Roanhorse series um, that starts with Black Sun because the new book is coming out. I already have my advanced copy of that one. So I think I want to do just like a binge of that series. I think that would be fun. Mm, okay, I'm like, should, do I even mention this? Because I know some of you are going to be like, yes, do it. And I can't I'm not saying I'm going to do this. There are two series that I am kind of itching to do a reread on, both of which are extremely long. <laughs> and so I'm kind of just like not sure what to do if I should do them as a season of Changeling cast, even though neither of these have Changelings in them. I don't know. But okay, the two series that I am like considering doing some kind of rereading project on are one, the in-depth series. I think that that could be fun. JD Robb slash Nora Roberts. My hesitation there is that I don't want to lose, I still want to maintain my 25 new Nora Robert books a year quota. And I don't, I feel like if I'm also rereading in death, I'm just going to be nora out. So I don't know about that. But that I, in my heart, I would like to do a reread. Maybe I'll go back and do a reread of like the books I rated the highest, something like that. I don't know. And then I feel in my heart like it's time to do a Poirot reread. And I I'm curious, like, I do think about redoing Project Poirot because, like, if I were doing it now, I would do it very differently. <sighs> I don't know. And again, it's a lot of books, so I just don't know. But those are the two that I'm considering doing some sort of rereading project for. Uh, but I have a lot of other vlogging rereading plans, so I think that'll be good. And then the third one, in terms of, like, getting the backlist, like, making some progress there, I definitely have some vlogging projects planned. I've already started one of them. But my overall goal, and maybe, okay, let me do a quick pivot here. Okay, so you see this, this bookshelf? This is my TBR bookshelf. My goal is by the end of the year that that top shelf is empty. So that means it's not that I'm not buying new books. I just have to be reading more than I'm bringing in, basically, which I'm do currently doing. But like doing that more focusedly, I guess. Sorry, I messed you guys up when I did that. Um, being more focused in that. And then by the end of the year, like literally having cleared a shelf. Because my thought is... If I make enough room, that means 2025 can be the year of new things, which would be fine. But um, this year's the year of backlist and the year of old things. So like, I wanna, I, I wanna make some serious progress there. I have identified a bunch of books that, well, I'll talk about a stack of them here in a second, but I've identified a bunch of books that have been on my TBR the longest, and I definitely have them on a read it or unhaul it plan. You'll see that in some vlogs that are coming up. A part of embracing the backlist, uh, oh, that's right, read the 20 oldest books on my TBR, and that would get me through 2017. Yeah, that's right. So those are incorporated in different projects that I've got going on that you will see. But that is my intention, and I think that will get me up through when I started booktube and then I think it will be easier for me to kind of know what to do with the ones that I've acquired since starting booktube. The other big change that I'm making in terms of embracing the backlist is that I am now instead of doing monthly hauls which I so let me talk a little bit about like my philosophy of why I've ever done hauls. To me because I'm a combination of a mood reader and project reader some of which are secret projects I have never been one to do a monthly TBR. Sometimes I'll do sort of like end of the year TBRs or 
if I'm participating in a readathon, I'll do, so like I've done TBRs, but I have never done them on a monthly basis. And what I like about TBRs, people who do them, is it tells me like, what are they thinking about reading? Like what's kind of like new and fresh with them? Like what's top of mind? It's kind of similar, I guess, in some ways to the benefits of doing reading wrap ups. It's, it's a way to get sort of like a bunch of, talking about a bunch of books in one video and not talking about them to the depth that they're getting spoiled, right? Part of the joy of a reading wrap up and of a haul is that you can talk about a book, but you're not spoiling it. So it's like a way to talk about books while preserving your interest and ability to read them fresh, if that makes sense. So because I've never done that with TBRs or I've never done TBRs, to me, hauls kind of like fill that slot of like, hey, here are things that are coming into my collection. Here are things that I'm excited about. Here's different things I'm thinking about reading or different projects I'm thinking about doing, whatever. But they've gotten just kind of stale, I think. I don't, they're easy to film. And back when I, I think like I kind of broke the seal this year on forcing myself to post at least twice a week. And I don't do that anymore. I made that change. That was a good change for me. Hey, in the times where I'm busier, I'm just going to post once a week. And because of that, I feel hauls were a good way to fill that sort of purpose in my overall content, as well as if I was like, oh, I really need another video up this week. It's one of the easier ones to film and edit quickly. You guys still like them. I mean, it's not that they are not, they don't do well or people don't like them. I just, I don't feel like doing them anymore, basically. But I do still like the idea of telling you guys about new things coming into my TBR. So what I think I'm gonna do instead, because the other thing I, I did start doing in the last couple years that made it a little fresher and fun to do, but even that I felt like kind of like the shine wore off for me pretty quickly within like 18 months. I do like also updating you guys about like, how am I doing on my overall TBR stack? Like, am I up? Am I down? It's good accountability for me. I know some of you guys like those stats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twice a year do a new to my TBR video. So it is kind of like a biannual haul, I guess, but the framing is not going to be a haul. It's going to be more like, hey, here are new things that have come onto my TBR. So like if I have bought and read a book before that video, you guys won't see it there. If I bought a collection type book, it won't be in there. So it'll be very focused on like, hey, here are the new things to my TBR that I have not yet read. And here's where I am overall in my TBR stats. I added 50 books, but I read 70. So I'm technically down 20 so far for the year, whatever it is. So that's how I'm going to do that from now on. When I get fun collection type books, I'm going to try to be better about posting those on Instagram because I like looking at pretty books. And I think, you know, Instagram is very intrinsically like, let's look at pretty books, but I sometimes don't have a lot to say about them other than look at this pretty book. So I'm going to try to be better, like I'm going to revive and try to be better about posting pretty books that I get over there. So if you're curious about special editions or whatever, I think I'm going to do that over there, but I'm really going to focus on TBR. Like what is changing on the TBR? I think that will be an improvement. I will still do my quarterly unhauls because I do think that those are interesting conversations. I still really like doing those and I know you guys like them too. So I'll still do that quarterly, but I'm just gonna do it twice a year new to my TBR video. And then the last like kind of chonky or like substantive goal I have is focus, What? how did I say this? Focus on starting, finishing and DNFing series that are already on my radar to make space to start more new series in 2020. So since I started tracking my series progress, I have made so much progress. In 2023, I finished 26 series and now only have 46 series that are active. That is a huge improvement over where I was. I think I had like 60, I was behind, I think like 60 series. I had 60 series going with like no plan to do anything about them when I started tracking. I only have 15 series right now that I'm not caught up on, that that are, that I'm not either caught up on or completed from that original cohort. So I have done a really good job in the last 18 months. Things already in the air. I have managed and gotten down to an, a much more reasonable number. And I think by the end of this year, I will be very close to my original goal, which was at any one time to only have five to 10-ish series that I'm behind on or in progress on. So I'm gonna be get very close to that, I think, this year. I also 
at that time had this like group of series over here in the side that I wanted to put into the air. And I have done some of that, particularly the Nora Roberts ones, because that's one of my goals anyway. And I should say half of the, let's see, I currently have 43 series on my list to start. And I would say probably half of those are Nora Roberts series of some kind. I want to now in 2024 start putting more of those into the air, like getting through that so that in 2025 I can start adding to this pile again of <laughs> series that I want to start. So what did I say? By the end of 2024, I want to finish at least 15 series, okay, and have 40 series currently active, meaning in flight. So either I'm caught up with them or I'm making progress on them. And I want to have a 30% changeover on the series to start so that it's fresher. So this pile over here, I want to have 30% of them make their way into the air, which would be 13 series from that list. So I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. But I basically, I'm just, I'm, I did a good job of kind of stabilizing the situation. And now we're gonna start adding some new series back in as kind of the bottom line. I also identified eight series that I either have to start or DNF this year. Like these are read it or unhaul it series. So those are the Mary Russell series from Laura King, which is a mystery series with a like that's Sherlock Holmes tie-in. These two I've actually already started and you will be seeing them in a different video, but the Dandelion King, or sorry, the Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Leo and Cold, the Cold series, Cold Magic series from Kate Elliott. Both of these are already in progress. Both of these are, this is like traditional high fantasy, historical fantasy series. This is more like steampunky kind of fantasy series. Prince of Fools by Mark Lawrence. Actually I have two Mark Lawrence ones on here. The other one being The Girl and the Stars. This one is a spinoff from the Red Sister series, so I'm really hoping I like this. And this one, I DNF'd the Prince of Thorns series, which is set in the same world, but that was his debut, so I'm hopeful that I might do better with this one. But I kind of want to find out if Mark Lawrence was like a flash in the in the bucket, flash in the pan, there you go, flash in the pan, or if I actually really, really like him because I loved, like, loved the Red Sister trilogy. Nothing has, like, I've not loved anything from him since then. So I don't know, we'll see. These I both have to either start or unhaul. And both of those are like, Hearts of Fools is grim dark fantasy, Girl and Stars is science fantasy. Amber Lowe by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is a fantasy series set in a version of like 1920s Berlin, I think. So yeah, I've heard that this is really good. This is the Magre series from Georges Simenon. And the first one is Pieter the Latvian. And I got it, it's a classic uh, series, but originally published in French. Class, or sorry, a classic detective series, I should say. And then in the Bleak Midwest, Winter by Julia Spencer Fleming. This is a Claire Ferguson, Russ Van Alstine novel. So I either have to start this mystery series or I have to unhaul it. Those are my read it or unhaul it ones. And then do I have anything else? Oh, the others are more just like boring, I guess, or not boring, but just things I want to make sure I do. So I definitely have a few sort of like longer video essays slash like history of kind of videos that I've been working on for a while. I want to actually just like finish those and get them out. And then I want to redo my spreadsheets. The last time I did my spreadsheet design was in 2011. And that was when I was doing them in a local version of Excel. Now all of them are in Google Sheets and there are cool things you can do in Google Sheets. I was watching Allie, the hardback hoarder. I was watching her video about what she does with Google Sheets the other day and I got a lot of inspiration and I was like Ugh, I need to just redo them this year because it's been almost 15 years and they're kind of they're just not they're very functional but they're not very pretty and I would like them to be pretty <laughs> and I just have different needs for sheets like for my spreadsheets now that I do booktube versus when I first created them anyway so oh the other thing I guess I have to I have some other books that I need to read like I have buddy read books I'll need to do I have a couple of five star predictions I still need to read I have tons of different vlogging project ideas. Yeah, all that, but I don't feel like I need to put those in my goals. Anyway, those are my main goals and I'm really excited. I feel like a lot of energy for this. Hopefully I will keep that energy. Sometimes that's a problem for me, but I am hopeful that I will keep the energy throughout the year and we'll see where we get to. So those are my 2024 goals for reading and booktube. Let me know what your goals are for 2024. Let me know if you have thoughts about any of the goals that I set. 
And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!